All right, now that Derek's explained a little bit about the car, let's talk power. And we're not gonna just talk about the power of the regular engine, we're gonna get right in to the racing version. So I get to talk with John Doonan. John's the director of motorsports, but John's been my traveling buddy, or I've been his traveling buddy for six years now. That's right. Uh, I think we spent more weekends together than with our respective spouses, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, that's right. But luckily we get along and we got a new adventure here. We do. And uh, the good news is you talk about the production engine. There's over 63% of the production engine by weight in this motor. And there's over 200 individual part numbers in this motor. So the great news is, is this started out as a great motor. Now we're gonna take it to the racetrack, put it through the most grueling test there is over a 24 hour race. Um, but it is the production block, the production head, and over 200 of the production Well, let's actually back up. This particular engine, when they did the first production engines, tell about the... Yeah, the, the day that the engines arrived at Speed Source in Coral Springs, Florida, Sylvain took a photo of the motors when he opened the crate. And the serial number was 001 through 005. Uh, this is a, a, a future one, but to, to have those first five engines off the production engine line really speaks volumes about number one, the quality of the castings and the quality of the components, but the commitment that we're gonna go out and prove this in public uh, to the consumers such that when they get back to their driveway and they turn that key on, they know they have a quality piece that's gonna go the distance for them as well. Well, Mazda's always raced a little bit differently than other manufacturers. And yeah. for years and years, people know about Mazda rotaries, but this is kind of a new engineering challenge. With, with no question, we wrote the record books with rotary. We're opening up a new chapter with the diesel engine. Um, clean diesel, no less. We're really proud of uh, the fact that when you push the starter button on this race motor, it doesn't uh, show any soot, which again, very similar to the production vehicle, no after treatments needed. Uh, so, so that's exciting. But um, as we open up at the Rolex 24, we'll be the first diesel engine ever to compete in that 24 hour race. And that's 51 years of racing. Yeah. Uh, we're the first one to bring a diesel engine. Uh, and then uh, the first one to be production based. I mean, over 200 components uh, of, of production based uh, pieces will be in the race engine. So. Uh, we're very excited to, to launch this, uh, making great power, making great uh, torque, and the reliability has been outstanding over 55 hours uh, on this individual engine on the dyno uh, as of last week. You know, just like we design a car to a price target, this engine, for the rules, does it not have to meet a... For sure. Uh, in the GX category of Grand Am, uh, we're able to price right at roughly where we were with the rotary engine. And then in the LMP2 category, as per the ACL regulations, uh, it's cost capped. Um, so as we've built our, our grassroots program around customers and customer base uh, programs, this is exactly how we've taken the approach uh, with, with the uh, diesel project. Actually, before we talk more on the diesel, should we put the, just to make sure the rotor heads understand, we haven't given up on the rotary, Mazda's still doing R&D. For sure, um, still doing R&D on production. And you think about the number of rotary race cars that are in our fleet. We have 9,000 grassroots racing customers and a huge percentage of them are still running uh, RX2, rotaries. RX2s, RX2s, threes, threes, sevens, sevens, eights. Exactly, and winning uh, uh, weekend in and weekend out. Um, but rotary engine and that spirit um, still alive and well in Hiroshima. And actually, when you look at the Sky Active suite, that same spirit of what went into developing the rotary and never giving up is exactly what's gone into the whole new philosophy of Sky Active technology. So the, the Sky Active portfolio of engines and transmissions was developed in Japan. Now this particular program is being managed by Partnership. You want to talk a little bit about who's doing the work? With, with no doubt, uh, Speed Source Race Engineering, uh, based in Coral Springs, Florida, have been a longtime partner of ours. And you know, we, we talk about our racing ladder of drivers. They're a, a ladder company. They yeah. started out in autocrossing. They started out in club racing and developed into semi-pro in that early steps of the, the pro ladder. And now they're the pinnacle top sports car team, both in Grand Am, two victories at the Rolex 24, uh, 2008 and 2010. So 
in that same way, we've entrusted the diesel project to them. Um, David Haskell, Marcus Shen, uh, Zach, and, and the gang there, led by uh, Sylvain Tremblay, have taken this right out of the crate uh, from Japan, right off the assembly line, uh, to full-blown race motor, because we've got a dual-stage uh, turbo system on the engine. So, and well, actually, the reason there's no one from Speed Source here today is they're working on the race car. Yeah, we're very excited that at the Rolex 24 in, in January, we're going to have four cars on the grid, uh, three of them customer teams, and the one uh, call it factory supported team in the Speed Source 70 car. So uh, there's going to be a lot of soul red uh, on the racetrack and, and a lot of uh, spirit among those teams to showcase for the first time ever a diesel engine at the Rolex 24. And actually, you mentioned the blower. Yeah. Get a shot over around here. The fact is that that's not stock. No, it's so. not. Um, but the, the production engine does have uh, a dual compound turbo setup obviously for the racing and for the packaging that we need uh, in the new chassis. Uh, we've got a, a small turbo that spools up the big turbo. Um, the unique thing that we found on the dyno is the uh, acceleration, actually much like the rotary, is very smooth all the way through the RPM range. And the best news of all, and I know the strategists sitting up on the top of the pit box are going to love this, um, but at the end of that Rolex 24 at Daytona, we will have gone the same race distance as everyone else on 30% less fuel. Now that's a huge story. Yeah. And every time the yellow flag comes out, the amount of fuel savings is going to be massive for the, uh, for the new Mazdas. And for uh, you and I know David Haskell, he is the data geek. I'm sure he'll know, calculate down to every shift on the uh, track. Yeah, and you know, if you step back and look at Skyactiv and the whole Skyactiv technology, it's a race engineer's dream. Lighter weight body parts, more rigid chassis, lighter weight and more efficient engines, and lighter weight and uh, more efficient transmissions. So it is absolutely the best approach. Uh, we're very excited to, to bring not only a new engine, but be aligned with a product launch. And again, show consumers that uh, if they put a Mazda uh, with Skyactiv technology in their driveway, it's been put through the toughest test there is on the planet. And, uh, you know, obviously, we're hoping that this thing's going to take off in other series, you know, because right now, you know, sports car racing, we've got a lot of great news to look forward to in 2014, but a lot of unknowns, too. One of the uh, special opportunities we've had with support from the executive committee at Mazda is that we set up this engine program as parallel development. This motor, uh, with obviously different packaging uh, and different power targets, is the same block, the same head, uh, the same lower cradle, and the several of the same components that will be in the LMP2. So uh, Grand Am and LMP2, very similar engine, and we've been able to test and, and put it through its paces on the dyno by running lap after lap of Daytona, shift for shift, acceleration, deceleration, yeah. uh, to be ready for both categories. And so I think we're positioned quite well uh, when sports car racing in the U.S takes a different look in 2014. So any other things you'd like to point out about this? Uh, tidbits that Sylvan shared with you? Well, it, it's so unique because even down to the injectors, I mean, you have stock injectors, stock uh, fuel rail. Uh, probably the only most gl uh, glowing piece is the beautiful uh, dry sump oil system that Speed Source developed. Uh, again, similar to the spirit of the engineers back in Hiroshima, Two young engineers, fresh out of engineering school, have been the primary leads and the primary designers on all the parts at Speed Source that are in this yeah. engine that are racing based. Yeah, no, I, there are a couple of Formula SAE grads. Exactly. On the team. Yeah, I know and, those and guys. So and... It's exciting for us, uh, and that's the spirit of Mazda. And, and so, really proud of that fact. And I know the drivers can't wait to get in it uh, after we announce the engine and as we've in the build up to Daytona, uh, several of our drivers, the Jonathan Bomberitos, the James Hinchcliffs, uh, James Hinchcliffs and Marino Franchitis keep texting, I, I can't wait, I can't wait. <laughs> um, it's not gonna make as much noise as a three rotor, but it's definitely uh, gonna make as much noise uh, when we stand up on victory, uh, the victory podium, hopefully at the, the end of the Daytona 24. Yeah, I think the rotor head is gonna be disappointing. The, there won't be the backfire under D cell, but it's gonna be the quietest car out there. Yeah, uh, it's gonna have a whoosh sound as opposed to that uh, screaming sound of the three rotor. And I think actually that's an interesting point, the fact that uh, noise fatigue is a factor for drivers in an endurance event. Yeah, I think the only noise fatigue they're going to have is from uh, the other cars that they're passing throughout the race. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, thanks, John. Thank you. Hey. Okay. How are you? CJ. CJ. <laughs> they let you in. I said I had your pass over there. Sorry, man. How you doing, sir? Good to see you guys. Good to see you, bro. Yeah. How's uh, 